Kevin Love has been moved to the center position because Tyron Lue wants to get creative with the Cavaliers' offense. Probably get Jay Crowder in there at the small ball four position as well. As a result, Kevin Love is not up for consideration for this power forward video. And similar to the small forwards, the top has no suspense, so I might as well just get number one out of the way. It's Anthony Davis. I made a video recently talking about how Anthony Davis still has potential to be the best player in the NBA. Because when you look at the athleticism combined with the mid-range jumper, the ball handling abilities, how he can post up on smaller dudes, and while his post up game is probably never going to be there to where he can go back to the basket on centers, he doesn't really need to do that because he can beat those guys with his face up game. I mean, Anthony Davis, he's, he's Anthony freaking Davis, you know, I don't got to dive too much into it. A couple areas I would like to see some improvement three point shooting as well as playmaking. I think those are the the two areas for him. He's also started to wear a headband. I don't know how I feel about it. Okay, the headband, eh, I don't know. Some guys, you know, they're Paul Pierce where it just works. And then sometimes it just doesn't. And I feel like Anthony Davis might be in the other section. And the reason I'm talking about that is because what the hell else am I going to tell you? You need somebody else on the internet telling you how good Anthony Davis is? I'm just trying to get by until the rest of this video. Uh, but Davis... He's good, man. Hopefully he and Boogie and the team they got around him can make it work this season. Uh, and for the number five, we're going now in order from five to two. I thought about Carmelo Anthony a lot because he's getting moved to power forward, and I think he could be really good for OKC. I think he will be really good for OKC. But I think I'm going to go Perzingis, which is kind of funny that I'm choosing Perzingis over Melo, given you know what I mean. Um... Is there a chance that Melo is going to be extremely efficient for OKC? Yes. However, I think Perzingis is going to see quite an offensive explosion this season where he's averaging 24, maybe 25 points a game for the Knicks. And it's going to be one of those situations where, you know, Melo's on the winning team and Perzingis' team could potentially have the first pick in the draft. But... Um, we're just going to see what Zinger's doing and the talent he has around him, and we're going to be able to say, oh yeah, if this guy had actual winning now roster around him, then we would consider him one of the top dudes in the league. So, Przingis is just going to ball out. Hopefully the Knicks just have enough stuff around him. Could they actually get the worst record? I mean, they've got to be better than the Bulls and potentially like Indiana and Atlanta, right? Well, who knows? We'll see. Number three, or number four, is Paul Millsap. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with the numbers. Millsap is probably... He's one of my favorite players. He's the type of guy I always like the most. The dude who averages like 16 points a game and only people on Reddit um, actually like him that much. Uh, what does Millsap do well? Defense, switches among multiple positions, and... The way he transformed himself from a dude in Utah who was more, like, just about scoring inside and stuff and defending his position and where he's at now, defending wing players. You could say that defensively he's a small forward and then offensively he's a power forward. Or maybe I'm just talking out of my ass with that one and that means absolutely nothing. The fit with Denver is going to be interesting because Millsap does like to post up Denver to me does not seem like a team that's going to want to post up too often but I think his ability to play off of Jokic is going to be really good. Cutting to the rim and um, being a ball handler and screen and rolls I brought this idea up before and I would like to see it could we get some power forward and center pick and rolls? I'm talking like Millsap getting screens from Jokic and then vice versa that could cause a lot of confusion for the defense and that could be pretty cool to see so hopefully Mike Malone just goes nuts with what he can do with these two guys. The only fear with Millsap is his age. But I do think he's going to have at least two seasons of being the dude that we saw in Atlanta. It would be a bonus if his three-point shot was a thing. Because if you add that to what he can already do, then he's really good. Uh, number three is Blake Griffin. Blake is in a weird spot in his career I guess just because he's declined a bit with his athleticism 
still very athletic, still gets up and down the floor with ease and can still dunk on your head, but it's not going to happen as much as it once did. Some injuries along the way, but Chris Paul is also gone. And with CP3 gone, we could see Blake having more opportunities in the low post, more opportunities getting the ball in transition. Um, sometimes where he can be the dude maybe chilling from around 15 feet or so and there can be action around him, kind of like Marc Gasol. Speaking of Marc Gasol, Blake had some moments from three last season and it could be interesting to see if that three-point shot is a real thing for him. I don't think it's that surprising because he's a good mid-range shooter and we've seen enough big dudes who are good mid-range shooters, stretch it out to the three-point line. So if Blake can do that, and he can maintain his passing and all that, then I think it's fair to say that he would be the third best power forward in the league. I could see his scoring not going up that much, but his overall impact increasing quite a bit. Number two is Draymond. Is Draymond Green the best player ever who only averages 10 points a game? Not only does he average 10 points a game, but he's not even a good three-point shooter anymore because he only shot like 32% from three in the regular season. Although I believe he was better in the playoffs, so I'll give him that one. Look, Draymond, he, he's just, he's so freaking good of a defensive player, and as a playmaker offensively, it just kind of works out, man. You know, if you leave him open on a screen and roll, he's going to dribble down low, or he'll dribble to the basket. You got to bring help, he'll kick out to a shooter. And then defensively, he can defend all five positions. He can play the center position. He's great in transition. It is what it is, man. I think last season I had Blake above Draymond because I was just hesitant of putting a dude who just doesn't score that much this high. But his impact is just ridiculous. So Draymond is that. And I do think Draymond kind of makes Golden State who they are. Like, of course... He's not the most talented player on the team. He's probably the fourth best. No, he's third best. He's better than Klay Thompson. He's the third best player on the team. But if he wasn't there, I mean, they would just lose that guy who could defend all the positions and whatever. He's the ultimate role player. You know what the hell I'm saying at this point with Draymond. Hopefully he doesn't kick more people in the nuts. Although it's a possibility with him, unfortunately. But remember, he's number two and number one is still Anthony Davis. Because, uh, Anthony Davis, it is what it is. The power forward position is, uh, decently exciting, I would say. Five solid players.